let's talk about what an herbal tincture is. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah and I am the owner of Ola Herbs. If you love all things herbal medicine or just want to learn more about herbs with me and come along on this journey, then please consider hitting that subscribe button below. So an herbal tincture looks a lot like this. So this is a four ounce tincture that I have. It's from my own personal stash, so there's no cutesy label or anything. Actually, I did try to do a label and then I got tincture on the label and it wasn't waterproof. Because like I said, this is just like my own stash, not ones that I am selling. But this is in short what an herbal tincture looks like. Basically, it is a large amount of the herb, either fresh or dried, and it is concentrated into a small amount of solution. However, it still has all the strength and benefits of either the dried or fresh leaf. Um, and I say all, but of course, a little bit is lost along the way simply because not Everything in an herb can be extracted all the time into a tincture, uh, but the majority of tinctures you're going to find on the shelf are from herbs that can be extracted, you know, or they'll tell you, you know, what that particular one is good for. Herbal tinctures can be made from vinegar, um, so like apple cider vinegar. They can be made from uh, vegetable glycerin, which is what I make my tinctures out of, and most commonly they can be made from alcohol. The reason most commonly they're made from alcohol is just because alcohol can get a ton more, um, I shouldn't say a ton more, but it can get a few more things that um, like vegetable glycerin cannot get. So for example, this tincture that I'm holding is goldenrod and nettles and I am taking it right now for my allergies because they're just crazy here. Now nettles um, is one of those plants that I can use in a tincture, um, in a vegetable glycerin tincture, and if I'm using it for allergies, it's going to be just fine. However, the iron in nettle is not extracted from vegetable glycerin and water. I would have to use alcohol in water if I wanted to use nettles, let's say, for anemia or to boost my iron. Um, so I'm still getting the benefits of nettles for what I want to use it for in this particular tincture. But if I wanted to use it for something else, um, or if I was making it for somebody who wanted to use it for something else, then I would definitely use a different substance to extract from. So just be aware whenever you're buying tinctures, you know, what is it you're going to use it for? You know, you can talk to the person who's selling it, you can talk to an herbalist, uh, and they can help you out to make sure that you know, if you're buying a nettles tincture for anemia and you get one with vegetable glycerin, I mean, it's not going to hurt you, but it's not going to help you. So that is in short what a tincture is. Now, a few reasons why you might want to opt to take a tincture version of herbs. Uh, I know for me, it's simply the convenience. Um, I can pop this, not necessarily this one. I mean, I could put this in my purse. It's just going to, it's pretty big. Um, but I have travel size ones, you know, that I can bring and put in my purse. Uh, if I don't want to necessarily make a cup of tea, you know, I'm on the go. I can just take my allotted dosage for the tincture. Uh, if I wake up at night, you know, and I'm just having trouble sleeping again, and I don't want to like necessarily make a cup of tea, um, I can take my tincture. So I would say the biggest reason for tinctures is honestly the convenience. Um, Another reason can be for taste. So all the tinctures, I shouldn't say all, the majority of tinctures I sell in my Etsy shop and to other people are all vegetable glycerin. Um, simply taste-wise, I prefer vegetable glycerin versus alcohol. Vegetable glycerin is all natural. Um, and it's safe for diabetics as well because even though it tastes sweeter, there's no sugar or anything in it. Um, it's just, it's an all natural substance. So taste wise, you know, I can just put it under my tongue. Whereas with the alcohol tinctures, uh, my friend can shoot them straight. She can just put it right under her tongue. I can't. Um, I have to put it in juice or, you know, something like that to kind of take the taste away. Uh, with kids, that's another great reason for tinctures. Uh, with kids, it's a lot easier <laughs> to get them to open their mouth for a tincture than to watch them 
and try to get them to drink a whole cup of tea, you know, for whatever the problem is you're trying to solve. Um, I think those are all my big benefits for tinctures. Of course, a couple cons, like I talked about, is just making sure that the herb you're taking in your tincture is actually, you know, able to be extracted with whatever solution it is, you know, the person is using it, the person you're buying it from, made it from, does that make sense? Or like if you're making it yourself, just make sure that you're using the right um, solution in there. Um, and then I would say just another con of tinctures. Is there another con of tinctures? I thought I thought of one. I don't know. I mean, I, I still drink tea. I drink tea at least two or three times a day. But, you know, it's nice to be able to take three to five dropperfuls of this tincture versus drinking four quarts of tea, which is kind of what I would have to drink um, to get the same effect. Was four quarts correct? No. Yes, maybe. I'm trying to think. It's basically like half a gallon of tea to get what I would get from like three to five dropperfuls of this. Um, and I have done it before. I have. I've done that where like I drink like two cups in the morning and two cups in the afternoon or something like that. It's just a lot of liquid. Um, which if you're sick, that can be a pro of drinking tea versus a tincture, right? It's keeping you hydrated. Um, and you get that comfort, you know. Uh, I have a video of how to make like a sore throat tea and absolutely like when I have a sore throat, I want the tea versus a tincture and a tea is going to get all the like mucinillage, I believe it's called from the herb, all that like sticky stuff that's going to coat your throat and make it feel really good. So how to take a tincture is very simple. Give it a little shake because no matter where you buy it from, these are herbs, and you might just get a little something, you know, stuck on the bottom, a little bit of residue, um, totally normal. Give it a little shake. Read the dosage. Um, again, this is one that I made, but I already know how much to take. So for this particular one, it's three to five dropper fulls. Dropper fulls, not drops. So like, if you can see this, that is a drop. Like for children, for my kids with allergies, I just give them the regular nettles, not goldenrod, and I give them just 11 drops like that. So I'm talking like dropper full, so as full as this will get. One, two, hmm. hold it under your tongue for like five seconds. And then you just swallow it. The reason you hold it under your tongue for a few seconds, um, the reason you do it under your tongue to begin with, is because it just kind of hits your body faster. It's not going to be the end of the world if you just take it on top of your tongue. Um, but like, if you're looking for it to hit your stream and all that faster, just do it under your tongue, hold it for a few seconds, and you're good. If you make them, you want to store them in like an amber bottle. You don't want to put them like directly in sunlight. Like this is fine. Like there's a window here and it's fine. I don't store it in front of the window. I store it on a shelf behind me um, or store it in a cabinet. It just helps as far as shelf life goes. An alcohol tincture can be good for upwards of 10 years. Um, you just might have to change out this part of it. This might get a little mushy from the alcohol, so you might just have to change out your dropper. The vegetable glycerin tinctures are going to be good for anywhere from like, I've heard five years. I tell people two years. Um, I feel comfortable using them beyond that, but as far as like anything I give people, um, you know, I'd say about two years, but smell it and you know, like, I know how this tincture smells. And you'll know, like, when you open it, if it's gone rank or something like that. So, you know, I have tinctures that are, like, three years old, and I still feel comfortable using them. I wouldn't sell them to anybody, but I feel good using them. They smell just fine, look just fine. So just use your best judgment as far as vegetable glycerin tinctures. You can extend their life by putting them in the fridge. Um, so... That is also an option. So that is what a tincture is, how to take a tincture, why you should take a tincture. 
Thank you guys for watching this video. If this spurred up any other questions that you are curious about, please leave those in the comments below. And just a reminder that all of this is meant as broad information. This is in no way me diagnosing you or telling you you should take these products. Please consult your herbalist and your doctor to see if a certain herb would be right for you. Again, this is just general information. Um, and remember that there are all types of herbs out there, um, all types of different things in the realm of herbal medicine. So if one thing doesn't work for you, there are dozens of other options out there for you. So don't be discouraged. Um, I just wanted to give that little disclaimer because sometimes people get a little discouraged when they try something and it doesn't work immediately. Every body is different and needs something different. So finding your magic formula with your herbalist and or your doctor is going to be the best way to go. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.